and Calder and Kenny, it's a real bonus for our Brisbane fans today. Yes, indeed, we do have a bonus for Brisbane viewers, Bear. With the Melbourne races off because of the big wet, we're going to show you races seven and eight from Doombin live today on the wide world of sport. And of course, we'll have races six and seven in Sydney, the Daly Double races. Now for some winners. I like the Sydney program today. And in race six, the first of the wait for age races of the season, I like TAB number one, Brawny Spirit. I think he can beat the two-year-old, Silence Prevails. Brawny Spirit to win. And in the second leg, I like TAB number four, Profits. One and four in Sydney. Up in Brisbane, where uh, uh, Mick Pelling and Eddie Wilkinson are staging a battle royal for the jockey's title, I like two Brian York mounts. They are number four, Totally Vain, in, in race seven. And in race eight, the lucky last, number six, The Harmo. Good luck, good punting. Thank you, Bear. Go on, you can. Thank you very much. Now, they seek her here. They seek her there. Hey, we're counting down to a start in race six at Rose Hill Gardens. Here's Kenny Callender. Kenny. Yeah, thanks very much, Max. Well, the new racing season starts on the horse's birthday, Tuesday, August 1. But this is actually the first wait for age race of the season. They're cheating by about three days. It's wait for age of 1,100 metres. And I like TAB number one, Brawny Spirit. Only $3.80 on the tote. Uh, when I was in the ring, bookies were about a point uh, more generous. Number two, Roanoke Boy is into $11. Clearly Chosen is getting out now to $21. The same price for Guam Holiday, a 20 to 1 chance. New Sept is getting out from $8.50 to $9. Number six, Great Condor at $12. Flitter is a scratching. Miss Kariba is showing at $10. Ramush is a scratching. Light Up the World has come in from $4.30 to $4.20. Just marginally better in the ring. Silence prevails at $6.50. He'll run a good race. And Masked Party at $17. He, Silence Prevails and Masked Party are both two-year-olds. OK, they're over behind the barriers. As you can see, they haven't gone into line yet, or they all haven't gone into line, I should say. They've started to go into line. And uh, that horse there that we saw in centre screen, number six, Saddlecloth, is Great Condor. Great Condor is uh, from Melbourne. He's only raced once and finished an excellent second. But he might just be biting off a little more than he can chew taking on these star horses. Uh, it's clearly chosen uh, there on the right in the black and the yellow. Clearly chosen, ran a good second at Rear Week last start to Concert Star, but like Great Condor, he's facing much stiffer opposition this afternoon. Uh, the jockey there, Corey Brown, dismounted. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any problem with the horse or whether he just goes in uh, better without a jockey. Some horses go in the barrier or he could have problems with a shoe. Uh, we'll see in a moment. Anyway, Corey's dismounted and clearly chosen as being led across. No, they've taken the runners out that were in the gates. I'd say that there might be uh, a shoeing problem with uh, Clearly Chosen, so there's likely to be a hold-up uh, in this race. I'd say it'll take, yes, there's the farrier there now. The farrier's about to work on Clearly Chosen. Obviously, one of his racing plates has become loose over behind the barrier. We can't have that. We'll have the farrier fix him up. They're brilliant workers, these guys, but I'd say he'll take two or three minutes, so there will be a hold-up just uh, for a moment here as uh, this horse gets his uh, uh, offside four plate uh, uh, taken off. They rip off the old shoe, as you can see there. That was quick work, but now he's got to get the, uh, the nails out and the new shoe back on. Uh, John, are you there? No, no, he's, uh, John's getting ready to call the race. I was just going to call him in, but I'll, uh, uh, he's not quite right to cross to yet, so we'll... Uh, We'll leave it there. That's Lindsay Murphy, the assistant uh, uh, Rose Hill Racecourse manager there in the uh, uh, bluey purple jacket. Who, uh, and we can see the farrier between the horse's legs as he uh, gets ready to uh, do his job and get clearly chosen back on track and ready to race. The tote prices are pretty well the same, uh, although number one Brawny Spirit is firm just a touch into $3.70. That is a bit niggardly when you consider the bookmaker's price, but $3.70 on the New South Wales TAB and uh, number five Newsept I see is into $9.20. $9.20, I think uh, we had him at $9, so he's actually just moved out a fraction and number eight is now at $8.90. Uh, Miss Kariba, 890 Miss Kariba when I give it to you I give you it at ten dollars so she's firm just over a point as we watch the farrier uh, hammer a few nails into the plate into the racing plate very very light uh, aluminium plates they'll be fitted on, on the horse's hoof lift it up mate now uh, clearly chosen don't be stubborn fellow we've got commitments to meet here uh, he hands his hoof over I'm glad we don't get shod this way but uh, 
and you'll find uh, it looks as though with uh, someone hammering a nail in that it might hurt you but it doesn't hurt them at all it goes into the soft part uh, of the horse's hoof and uh, the horse doesn't mind at all the farrier's at work there he won't take long they're masters at this and uh, once he gets this completed, they'll put the rest of the field back in. Interesting race here. Some people are of the opinion that at Rose Hill today, the inside might be quite as good as racing a few out off the fence with a few swoopers winning earlier races. And uh, Brawny Spirit was thought to have a big advantage from one barrier, but I think that might be one of the reasons now why bookies uh, are taking risks with him. We're going to show two races live in Brisbane today, uh, races seven and eight. And an interesting uh, go up there today because at the start of the day, uh, Eddie Wilkinson and Mick Pelling had both ridden 52 winners and this is the last day of the Premiership. Well, in race three on the program, young, Wilkin young Wilkinson won on hands twice, so he went to 53. Then two races later in race five, Michael Pelling won on Tell Tina, so the score now is 53 all. They've just completed race six up there. Neither boy rode the winner and we'll see them on the next mounts in which uh, Eddie Wilkinson will ride El Maestro and Michael Pelling will ride high yield. That's in race seven in Brisbane to come up shortly. Back here at Rose Hill, we're still waiting for Clearly Chosen to get his shoes on, or his shoe on, to be uh, more exact, and that's his jockey, Corey Brown. Uh, just by his mannerisms there, looking just a touch impatient, uh, and well he might, but uh, Clearly Chosen will be ready as Lindsay Murphy gives him a little bit of a pat. Uh, just going past there is Roanoke Boyd, TAB number two, Rodney Quinn's mount. I'll have a glance at the tote, still showing at $11. Uh, Roanoke Boy from Barrier 11, he'll get back a little bit and then uh, come with a charge in the straight, I should imagine. OK, great condors going in. Corey Brown's gone in and to wait for Clearly Chosen. The Roanoke Boy goes in. I suspect now that Clearly Chosen is the only runner still out. Uh, let's have a look as we pan back here. Yeah, the farrier's nearly ready to uh, let him go. Uh, just putting the fi finishing touches. Yeah, uh, Billy Dale, the starter, you just saw come in and out of the picture. I think the uh, farrier gave him the nod that everything's right. And as clearly chosen, goes over to go in the barrier to complete this field of 10. I think that it's an opportune time now for us to cross to our caller. And of course, he's the best in the business, John Tapp. Here he is. Tell me when you're ready, Thank you, Ken. Williams. Thanks, my boy, and well done, Ken. It was a, a decent old stretch. Now clearly chosen in the stalls and the start of Billy Dale coming over to release the field in the Group 3 Missile Stakes. All set. Off. Oh, beautiful start. Came out in a perfect line. Brawny Spirit from the inside, one of the first out. Quickly into stride is Marsh Party and Guam Holiday is away well. So is Miss Kariba. Followed by Silence Prevails. Great Condor is out very deep in the run to the first turn. New Scepter's midfield on the inside of Clearly Chosen. Followed by Renoki Boy and Light Up the World after an early check is right out the back. Miss Kariba takes a narrow lead over Brawny Spirit at the 700 mark. Marsh Party in third spot. Guam Holiday fourth. Great Condor can't get on the track between horses silence prevails on the fence new sept then clearly chosen Renoki boy and light up the world is last as they turn for home brawny spirit a narrow leader over miss kariba as they straighten up in third place guam holiday and then masked party silence prevails after being held up as into the clear now further out great condor brawny spirit kicked at the 200 he put more than two lengths on masked party followed by guam holiday and little light up the world is sizzling down the outside from stone last on the turn brawny spirit in front light up the world has run an incredible race to get second but brawny spirit beat light up the world mass party third followed by guam holiday renoki boy then clearly chosen great condor new sept and silence prevails and miss kariba weakens to run last in the missile stakes Tuesday on Funniest Home. Dividends now from the uh, previous at uh, Rose Hill, where the numbers were 1, 10, and 12. Brawny Spirit, 3.70 and $1.60. Light Up the World, $2 even. And Masked Party, $4.80. Four AFL games on this afternoon. Here are the latest scores for you. Half time, Essendon leading Fremantle, 10 goals, 2.62 to 7.446. Richmond's playing St Kilda. Half time there, the Saints well in front, 8.755 to the Tigers, 4.529. Geelong up against Sydney.
Sydney, and it's a 30-point lead to the Cats, 10-6-66 to Sydney's 5-6-36, and Footscray playing Hawthorne, and at half-time there, 15-point lead to Footscray, 7-7-49 to 5-4-34. OK, now we'll check the early totes for race seven in Brisbane. Here's Kenny. Ken? Yeah, thanks very much, Bear. Here we go. Uh, remember, El Maestro at $6 is the Mick Pelling Mount. High Yield is at $9. Blazing Steel is favoured at $3. Uh, no, I'm sorry, High Yield was the Mick Pelling Mount. I was wrong. El Maestro is Eddie Wilkinson. I've got them back to front. $6 for Wilkinson on El Maestro, $9 for Pelling on High Yield, $3 Blazing Steel, McDitman's Mount, its favourite, 2 to 1. Totally Vain, my pick is showing at $6, but Twang Marrakit is a scratching, Farmerson at $16, Twig Match 21, Positive Vibes 31, Characterise at $9, Divisibility at 34, Romanoff 41, Spokes 100, 101, North Sea and Distant Jewel about both out, Vibrant for Forever is a 40 to 1 chance, Gem Tannery is a scratching, Yamin is at $67, Sun Empress at 31, Pride's Maid 126, King's Champion is out, Top Oet is at $51, and Rory's Pride is a scratching. I finally got through them all, Bear. Back to you. Oh, quite a lot there, Ken. OK, Max, here you go. Handball to you. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, Bear. Right on the sport. They're almost ready for race seven at Doombin. Let's cross to Ken Callender. Ken? Yeah, thanks very much, Kenny. As you say, they're getting close to a start at uh, Dooman. We've got time for a late Tate update. There's been a few changes. Number one, El Maestro, which I told you is Eddie Wilkinson's mount, is now into 7 to 2 or $4.50. High yield, Michael Pelling is a 6 to 1 chance at $7. Blazing Steel favourite for McDipman at $3. Totally vain, the horse I've selected is at $7. Uh, Between Marrakit is out. Farmerson is at $17, Twig Match at $16, Positive Vibes at $31, Characterise at $13, Divisibility at $34, Romanoff at $41, Spokes is 100 to 1 chance, North Sea and Distant Jewel are both out, Vibrant Forever showing very, very big on the tote, I think it'll come in late, I think that uh, that'll firm a little. Gem, t Gem Tenari is a scratching, the others are big odds, 80 Yemen 8, 34 Sun Empress, 200 Prides made, 67 Topo Wet. They're all in the barrier, they're about to jump, let's go trackside at Doombin. And we welcome our viewers through wide world of sports to Doombin for race number seven, which I think is the best race of the day. Smart two-year-olds here, the centre point finance handicap. Eddie Wilkinson and Mike Pelling level pegging on 53 wins in the Jockeys Premiership after riding one each here today. Set to run. Lights are on. Racing now. Positive vibes from the outside and Farmer, some of the two best to begin. El Maestro began quickly. High yield near the inside is going fast and Sun Empress is driving through. Now Blazing Steel's back second last early. On settling down and Farmerson's going to lead a pack field. El Maestro's gone up second. High yield driving through to third and Sun Empress fourth on the inside. A twig match followed by Pride's Maid. Two lengths away in the field. Blazing Steel going to midfield but he's trapped a little bit deep. Then Vibrant Forever between runners. Totally vain on the fence from Ron. G Blazing Steel looks to be racing very erratically. Then Yamandi a long way back with Positive Vibes, Divisibility. And then Kane characterised back near the tail with Spokes and Top Oet. At the 600, Farmerson is the leader. High yields on his outside. A length away, Sun Empress on the inside. A Romanov followed by Twig Match. El Maestro can't get in. He's off the track. Vibrant forever between runners on the fences. Totally vain. And Blazing Steel's about to come to the outside in the straight. And McPelling went for home on high yield. He raced up the go to the lead from Farmerson, Romanov, Sun Empress. Here's Blazing Steel coming with a big run on the outside. High Yield in front of the 200. Blazing Steel a length away about to go to him. High Yield and Blazing Steel. Dipman and Pelling. Blazing Steel went to the front. He's done a million thing wrongs this horse but he's pretty good. And Blazing Steel went home to win. High Yield second, third. Either totally vain. Characterise Romanov and positive vibes all across the track from divisibility and spokes. Behind that bunch, Top Oet, Yamandi, Sun Empress, Farmerson. Then came Twig Match, Vibrant Forever, and then Pride's Maid. And I don't know what went amiss with El Maestro. He's pulled up at the tail of the field. Snow, snow and more snow. Sick of snow. 
Time to check dividends for the previous in Brisbane. Three, two and four. Blazing steel, two eighty and a dollar sixty-five. High yield, two twenty-five. Totally vain, two dollars even. Four AFL games. Here's the latest scores for you. Essendon and Fremantle. Essendon 14387. Fremantle 9862. Richmond and St Kilda. St Kilda doing very nicely. 111-77. Tigers 5636. The Cats and Sydney. And Cats doing it well. Gary Ablett kicking his 100th. 12880. Sydney 6743. Footscray and Hawthorne. And it's Footscray 8755. The Hawks 5838. England's in a pretty strong position in the fourth cricket test against the West Indies at Old Trafford. And get the second leg of the Derby double home. And number one O'Hara is a scratching. Red Eagle, as I just tighten that up a little bit there, Red Eagle is at $26, getting out now to $30. Nick's Joy is a scratching. Profits is favoured on the tote, as I speak, has come in from $350 to $340. He'll get out in front, I just hope he stays there. Our shockwave is a scratching. What he goes, or what he goes, whatever you want to call it, is at $9. Bow Mead is a scratching. Semi Amu is a $13 chance. Number nine, Shy Rawl, Darren Beedman's mount. Darren won the previous race, of course, uh, on Brawny Spirit and established a New South Wales riding record of 182 wins for the season. That's all tracks. Shy Rawl is... Uh, he was as at $8.90 now, almost out to $9. Military coup number 10 is showing at $11 into $10. Rock solid, I'm a freak. Uh, races in the Parramatta colours of uh, uh, blue and yellow, uh, mainly because he's part owned by former Parramatta great Peter Wynn. Uh, Peter has got a big sports store at Parramatta. Pass the ammo is a scratching. Ashley Road at $17. Private at $11. TAB at number 15. Regal Don from the Gay Waterhouse Stable is getting out a little bit now to about $21. The Ducks is at $16 now. Take Issue is one of the roughies, just getting out to 100 to 1, and the same with Sonar Boy. The race is over 1,350 metres. Profits is to be ridden by the Newcastle jockey, Daryl McClellan. OK, as we pick up vision there, we can see that they're all going in. Let's hope we don't have any more shoeing problems. Uh, there's one without his jockey. I think it's what he goes, is it? Uh, or is it? I'm not quite sure. Trying to pick him up there. Uh, anyway, we'll work him out in a minute. Uh, Profits is a horse who normally gets out in front, shows plenty of pace, and uh, let's hope he can keep going. That's actually Samai Amu that's giving the problem. Uh, he won't give too much of a problem there. They'll find a, a trick or two to make him go in. Uh, Semi Amu is TOB number eight, and uh, that's his jockey, Nathan Stanley, just standing there in the green and the purple, waiting for the horse. Now, listen, fella, you've got to go in. We haven't got much time to waste. You'll see the barrier attendants will lock hands behind him, give him a bit of coaxing, and this time, come on, mate, do the right thing. Yes, in he goes. Don't go halfway. In he goes. Get that gate closed, fellas. Yeah, they got it closed. The jockey will remount. The last couple will go in, and the man to call the action, of course, is John Tapp. Here he is. Conditions have cooled right down at Rose Hill Gardens as we wait for three horses to move in for the Japan Racing Association Cup. Private goes up, take issue next along, ridden by the former Victorian Kevin Forrester. Well, he's still a Victorian, of course, uh, but he's now based in Sydney and he's going to try his luck here for a while. Rode a winner earlier today on a roughy, 150 to one shot. Starter onto his stand as the last couple go up and they're all set. Gates open off and running. Good start with the exception of Red Eagle and Private, both a little bit slow. The others came out in a nice even line with Profits going to the lead. Military coup has fired out of an outside barrier. Regal Don began well. Settling down just off the pace, semi Amu Shy Royal is trapped deep in the run to the first turn. Further back, Ashley Road, followed by What He Goes, and then the Ducks and I'm a Freak. Back midfield on settling down is Sona Boy. Private's a good way back after that slow start, and Red Eagle is two lengths away, last of all, as they come to the 900 mark. Profits the leader. Military coup second. Regal Don third. Followed by Ashley Road. Shy Royal. What he goes on the outside of Semi Amu. Further back then as they race down the side take issue is off the track on the outside of the Ducks. I'm a freak. Awkwardly placed. Further back Sona Boy. Followed by Private and two lengths away. Last Red Eagle. Profits booted away. Coming around the turn. Put about three lengths on Regal Don. Military coup under pressure. Followed closely by Shy Royal and then Ashley Road and Semi Amu as they turn for home where Profits is a mile in front. 
Profits led by about three to Regal Don. Shy Royal getting home well, followed by Ashley Road, and Waddy goes right down the outside. Profits clear with 150 to go. Waddy goes laying in badly, has run into second place, but he's out after the leader. Profits is paddling. Here comes Waddy goes. Waddy goes desperately written is charging at Profits and got him on the line. Waddy goes hung in badly, but got up to beat Profits in the last bound with I'm a Freak third, followed by Ashley Road, Shy Royal, Semi Amu, then Red Eagle, a nice run from Sona Boy, Military Coup knocked up, well back Regal Don, then Private and Take Issue as last. There's always chaos. Now, did you ever win in the seventh at Rose Hill? If you did, here is your reward. The numbers were six, four, and eleven. Yeah, that horse there, I can't pronounce it. What Whitey Goss is it? Nine fifty and two eighty. Profits, dollar sixty. I'm a freak. Two dollars ten. New Zealand's beaten Australia in the rugby union, thirty-four to twenty-three. The final score. Ooh, low move was pretty good. Now, Aussie Terry Price is four shots off the lead after the second round of the Dutch Golf Open. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. Uh, I've got these uh, tote prices for the last at Doombin. But remember, on 53 wins all is Eddie Wilkinson and uh, Michael Pelling. And uh, it'll either be a, a tied result in the Jockeys Premiership up there unless one of them wins the last. Number one Pringle is a scratching. Knight's Tail is at $13. Silver Cheval, which is Eddie Wilkinson's mount, is at $5 or 4 to 1. Touch My Pocket at $17. Dick the Decent at $10. The Hamo from New Zealand is favourite on the tote at $4.50. $10 for Sal Gen. $7 for the Mouse Hunter. $8 for Durham. Doubles all round is a scratching. Michael Pelling's mount is Yachenko. It is at $6, a 5 to 1 chance. Deep Cut is at 125 to 1. History Repeats is at $67. John's Don is a 50 to 1 chance. Mr. Trist a 10 to 1 chance or $11. Mandali $67. Nook Took is a scratching. They're off. Beats knuckled over and dropped to the tail of the field and Sel Jen the first to come out and Derham began in a hurry. Silver Chevelle left the stalls in a big hurry just behind them with Mr. Trish Uchenko up handy from Knight's Tail the Hamo. Then touch my pocket, Dick the Decent followed by Deep Cup, John's Don's Mundelli and last history repeats. Into the first corner, the mouse under the leader, Mr. Trist is second. Knight's Tail next on the outside, Derham fourth, Uchenko's over, one off the fence in fifth. A length and a half to touch my pocket followed by Sel Jen. On the fence is Silver Chevelle, followed by the Hamo and Dick the Decent, deep cut. Then John's Don Mundellian and last history repeats. <coughs> On the corner, 4.50 to go, and the Mouse Hunter first to the bend. Racing second on the outside, Mr. Trish from Knight's Tail. Derham on the fence, Uchenko looking for the way out. Silver Cheval on the fence, and then touch my pocket, and the Hamo's coming home. The Mouse Hunter, the lead, 300 to go. Pelling's out on Yuchenko. Yuchenko's race to the lead inside the 200 from the Mouse Hunter. Here comes the Hamo on the outside. It's Yuchenko in front. Mick Pelling's got the premiership. Yuchenko's raced away from the Hamo and the Mouse Hunter, and Yuchenko wins the last event of the day and the premiership is Michael Pelling second the Hamo, third the Mouse Hunter then Dick the Decent followed by Derham, then Sal Jen, Silver Cheval followed by Mr Trist Knight's Tail Mundelli followed by Deep Cut, Touch My Pocket History Repeats and John's Don is last Down to Redgate it's another super start by John Clennon to stay ahead of the two Fords. So Clennon leads Radisic and Burt. Then the rest, Rydell is fourth, Menu is fifth. 